Manchester City have been hit by over a hundred charges from the Premier League that could see them relegated from the league if they are true. So to answer a few important questions here, one, what is happening? Two, what are the actual charges? And three, what might this all mean? And four, why is the guy that's been chosen to oversee all of this so particularly interesting? Well, we have to get you there first, because what is actually happening right now? Because if you were curious and wondering if you'd seen all of these headlines before, you are right. Manchester City was charged by UEFA in 2020 for violating financial fair play rules, but CAS, the Committee for Arbitration and Sport, it's something in Switzerland, decided on a two to one vote on a three person commission that Manchester City had not done those things. And so in July of 2020, Manchester City was cleared of the charges from UEFA. But these are actually almost entirely different and they're coming from an entirely different source because these charges, over a hundred of them, are coming from the Premier League itself. This is an entirely separate governing body from UEFA and as such, the Committee for Arbitration of Sport can't participate in this, which means Manchester City is not gonna be able to use the same argument to, to get out of it. And the huge difference is that the Premier League doesn't have the same time constraints that UEFA did because UEFA has a statute of limitations on their charges and most of them were thrown out on appeal because they were out of the statute of limitations. They weren't even considered while the Premier League doesn't have that. They can go back as far as they need to. What's fascinating here is that UEFA and the Premier League started their investigations at the same time. This was after German newspaper Der Spiegel got its hands on some leaked documents and wrote like a week's worth of bombshell stories about the illicit payments and inflated sponsorship payments. And we're gonna get into all of that in a second. But one, I find it incredibly concerning that multiple governing bodies only started to investigate somebody after somebody went and stole a a few emails to write some articles like I feel like you should be more on top of it than that some random Portuguese dude gets a hold of some emails and gives them to a German newspaper and now all of a sudden every major governing body in the world is looking at somebody they probably should have been looking at you'll see why if you're wondering who the Portuguese guy is it's Rui Pinto he started this website called football leaks that ran for four years he's since been arrested for qualified extortion and violation of secrecy and illegal accessing of information which is unsurprising given that he ran a website website called Football Leaks, but that's where all of this came from initially, and that's what started this Premier League investigation as well. And the only reason this became public was on a 736 word statement on the Premier League's actual website. This was not their head story. This was something that they were required to make public by the bylaws of the Premier League because now the charges are transferring from the Premier League investigation to the independent judicial Premier League panel, which I love the fact that if you can include independent in the title, you can make everything sound more independent. It's literally the Premier League's judicial panel. It just has the word independent in the title. It is independent, I swear. Source, trust me, bro. That's the only reason this became public. It was never the top story of the Premier League site. It was below like FPL tips and stuff. And before they even started looking into them, the original stuff hanging over Manchester City was that their sponsors were inflating the amount that they were paying Manchester City so that Man City could meet FFP which I know would come as a surprise considering their sponsors are <clears throat> First, Abu Dhabi Bank, Etihad Airways, Experience Abu Dhabi, Emirates Palace Hotel in Abu Dhabi, Alder Properties of Abu Dhabi, Mazda Energy of Abu Dhabi, and Telecoms of Abu Dhabi. There was no conflict of interest there at all. How dare you even suggest that there would be a conflict of interest there. But that sort of thing is very difficult to prove. The allegation is essentially that all of those companies are Todd Bully in a negotiating room where they just go, hey man, I'll buy that sponsorship for $20. And then Manchester City says 30. And then Abu Dhabi energy whatever conglomerate goes <clears throat> 150. But now that you are grounded, and what exactly is going on? What are the charges? Good news. I read the whole thing and, and read about, God, it was so boring. Oh, this is such a cool headline. The actual facts of this case, so boring. This is like a paperwork dispute here. At least that's the first part of this because there are five sections to the charges, five different sections that are listed out by the Premier League. And the first section has everything to do with paperwork. Now, the whole first section just lists a bunch of parts of Premier League code that have to do with properly reporting your profit and loss statements and properly reporting your profit 
and loss projections. Now, because the Premier League is charging Man City with violating these statutes, that means the Premier League is saying that Manchester City did not do this. In what way they did not do this? By either falsifying them, by just not submitting them, by submitting incomplete forms, we don't know. They're also charged with not properly applying for the UEFA club license, which you have to like apply to the English FA to get your club license for UEFA, if that makes sense, to play in the Champions League. You following me? Like we all know they're not gonna win it, but like to play in it. And the first section also is the first wave of charges that relate to not acting in good faith towards the Premier League and other clubs in the Premier League which is pretty self-explanatory. But the best one, by far, buried under a wall of analyzing Premier League statutes is the fact that they violated this one. Rule C80, which refers to City's provision of tickets to visiting clubs in their stadium. Now, I try to empathize with both sides. There are good arguments that City is making for various parts of this. <laughs> the fact that you violated the code for providing opposition teams fans with tickets is the most empty had thing I have ever heard in my entire life. To be fair, this allegation is just for the 09-10 season and not any of the other seasons. So it was one season. They wanted to make sure that the stands were full of uh, baby blue, mostly. The second section not disclosing full payments for players. This has a lot to do with paperwork stuff too, paying players extra stuff that's not disclosed in the contracts which are approved by the Premier League. You, you have to disclose everything you're giving to players and they're being alleged of not doing that over a number of years, which is just like recurring charges. You're just ringing up your bill each year. On top of the players, there is also a listed allegation of not disclosing properly the payments to Roberto Mancini, the manager in the early 2010s. Worth mentioning, Pep is not mentioned in this at all, nor improprieties when it comes to his pay. The third section is a violation of the UEFA FFP rules, which if you're thinking, Zayla, England is not UEFA. We had a vote on this. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. But they included uh, adherence to UEFA's FFP rules in the Premier League statutes and stuff. And so it is relevant and they can charge them for a violation of Premier League rules, even though they are UEFA's rules that were put into the Premier League rule set. Like the rule is adhere to UEFA's rules, which just wires UEFA's rules in, in section three here. The fourth section is adherence to the Premier League's own version of FFP, which according to The Athletic is more lenient, but they're also being charged with violating that. And both of the last two sections are essentially inevitable given the first two sections where they're being charged with just not properly disclosing anything financial, profit and loss, profit and loss projections and, and player contracts. It's very hard to not get charged for FFP violations if you're getting charged for not telling them how much money you made. Then section five is the you didn't cooperate section. Now this section has to do with a bunch of charges in relation to not acting in good faith. Essentially, the idea is the Premier League has it in rules that when they ask you for stuff, you need to provide it. And it took Manchester City two and a half years of legal dueling to ever concede that they were going to give the stuff to the Premier League for the investigation in the first place, which is not a good way to survive charges under the good faith doctrine of the Premier League. This brings us to what could happen and what does it mean? Well, first, what will happen? This goes to the independent Premier League judicial panel. Woohoo! More specifically, it goes to Murray Rose and Casey. This is my favorite character in the entire story. Murray Rose and Casey, he's a barrister at Four New Square Chambers. He is also, according to The Athletic, listed formerly on the website as an Arsenal fan. Just marinate in that. How awesome is that? And awesome in that I'm not a Man City fan. If I was, I would be furious because the dude is listed as a member of an Ar of Arsenal. He will be appointing a three-person commission to rule on the charges. He is the head of the independent Premier League judicial panel of independence. You'd think it was American with how much independence is going on up in here. The panel's actually 15 people, but he is the head of it, and he's going to be appointing a commission to rule on these charges. But don't get ahead of yourself because this is going to take months. If it took them four years to put this together, essentially a year and a half after 
Man City finally stopped delaying the process, for which they're being promptly charged for. And even after that, there's an appeals process, but it won't go to CAS, to CAS, which, you know, reversed things on appeal last time. Because again, this is all staying in-house. This is all Premier League stuff. And what are the potential punishments? Well, they're freaking juicy. The biggest one is expulsion from the Premier League, but I think even with over 100 charges, that'd be a little ridiculous. Now, you could get relegated, you could get fined, and you could get a points deduction, all tied to the severity of the charges confirmed. And need I remind you that the Premier League doesn't have any statute of limitations on any of this. Where UEFA did, they couldn't go further back than five years. That's why a lot of the things were thrown out on appeal. So you might be wondering what arguments at this point Manchester City could possibly be making. And honestly, there are two arguments I kind of half agree with. The first one is that they're just being caught unfairly. Like every kid in the family stole from the cookie jar, but you're just picking out Timmy because you think Timmy would make a good poster boy for this. I mean, Roman Abranovich had a 1.5 billion dollar rolling debt at Chelsea. Bowley's spent like 600 million while he's been at Chelsea, right? Manchester United spends money it doesn't have all the freaking time on Harry Maguire's forehead extensions of all things. I mean, can we really believe the Premier League is actually enforcing this if you needed a random guy in Portugal to leak some documents for you to even start investigating something that you're alleging happened nine years ago or started happening nine years ago? How can you possibly say that the profit and loss sheets from other clubs and the profit and loss projections from other clubs are okay when you're seemingly not investigating anything? Like this is just an obvious attempt to just throw Manchester City up on a poster like, look, see, we did something. The issue for Manchester City is that doesn't mean you didn't break the rules, right? And the other argument that we hear coming in favor of Manchester City is that FFP is an old boys club, which I do agree with. See, FFP is the idea that the more money you make, the more money you can spend in a healthy relationship that makes sure clubs don't go into crazy debt. But when you're a nation club like Manchester City is, who cares? You have all the money in the world, you're richer than Croesus. You're also richer than Crassus. Both of those apply. I majored in history, I'm a nerd, help me. So while Manchester United can spend a couple hundred million dollars on Harry Maguire's forehead extensions, that's because they make a couple hundred million dollars every year. But if you're MK Dons and you make $20 a year, you can't spend more than $30 without breaking FFP. This obviously preserves a good old boys network at the top of the game. Because if you're a huge club, you can stay a huge club because you can spend more money. And I'm sure that was a big part of the motivation for instituting FFP, but FFP also leads to healthy financial operation because you can't outspend your means by a lot. It's like the side effect of this greed was actually good for the game. So now, we wait a couple months and then Manchester City will get punished in some way, assuming one of the over 100 charges is true. And then they'll appeal it and then we have to wait for that. And then they'll probably get some points knocked off if I had to guess. But my biggest takeaway from this is that a club in 2009 can start allegedly breaking the rules. And we are just getting to it in 2023. And if we're really serious about trying to enforce all of these financial rules to preserve the integrity and the health of the game, probably gonna need a better mechanism than that. This video took a lot of reading of financial and legal stuff. And so if you appreciate that, then feel free to subscribe so that it is good encouragement for me to do it again and get some glasses. Uh, also, if you are interested in the downfall of the US national team, that is the story that involves Gio Reyna, his parents, their high school and college best friends. And yeah, you just have to watch the video.